Sir Ryan of House Davis. Sir Sean of House Davis. Unsheath your swords and let us have a talk of ice and fire. This is so much better than Corecast. We get swords. That is awesome. I like swords. Hey everyone, welcome to our new show, A Talk of Ice and Fire. We're going to talk about Game of Thrones for Season 5. We're pretty excited. A um, yeah. couple things. One, we're obviously huge fans and we've all read the books actually. But we're not going to talk about the books. But if we ever do mention any spoilery things or anything along those lines, we'll be sure to flash on screen and give you fair warning. So don't be worried, but we're going to focus on the show. It's the show. We're... We're all about the... There's all about that show. All about all that show. show. About that show. show. No about that show. reading. <laughs> That's a good message to the kids. Yeah. <laughs> See you later. Yeah. What episode are we talking about? Well, we're going to talk about the first episode of season five titled Wars to Come. Is it The Wars to Come or is it Wars to Come? That means oh, The Wars to Come. I didn't watch it. I don't know. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh... Okay. Well, first of all... What, what, what do we have here in our first episode of season five? We basically, is uh, you know, the state of affairs. Uh, what's going on with every character involved? Uh, we missed, I think, uh, Arya, Arya, Arya um, um, Bran, um, I think a couple other minor things. Yeah, we and, we'll, and we'll get to them next, uh, next episode, I'm sure. Yeah. But basically, it was just kind of like, hey, here's what all the characters are doing. Not a lot of development, not a lot of that kind of oh. stuff going on, but just like, here's everyone's conflict that's gonna you're going to be looking forward in the... In the you know, season coming up here. Yeah, I mean, there was no surprises, really. I mean, it was just, it was very similar to how every season of Game of Thrones starts. You're establishing where every single character is at. And there's so many characters now that they had to leave a few out because they couldn't even get right. to them. I mean, it was almost kind of funny watching the previously on Game of Thrones where they basically recap four seasons. Like, they were showing clips from season one. Yeah. It's like, yeah. this is relevant still, and this is relevant still. Yeah. So it's just kind of like, ah, it's so overwhelming that they need to take the time at the beginning of the season to basically, like, Remember, you like this guy. You don't like this person. They're awful. Mm -hmm. they, you know, like you, yeah. like you kind of have right. to reestablish your emotional ties to all these characters. Yeah, yeah. and that right. even goes towards the the previews for the next episode. It's not even about like what you're looking forward with the, the, coming up for Daenerys yeah. in the next episode. It's like, oh, all the characters that we didn't get to. That's what we're going to be talking about next yeah, episode, exactly. and it's basically just recapping. Yeah, again. it's going to take about two episodes to yeah. establish where yeah. everyone's at. So I guess let's start where the episode starts, and it's one of the first. It's the first flashback we have ever seen in Game of Thrones. So yeah. we see. Cersei as a little girl, and she runs into a fortune teller who tells her everything that we already know about her. <laughs> I don't know why that was necessary, but I guess we know. Well, I know. I know. We said we're not going to talk about the book, but that was one of the parts that I was like, "Oh man, I'm, I thought they were never going to include that in the show." I almost took it kind of as almost like a little bit of a wink and a nod to the kind of people who are aware. So. Oh, yeah. This season, they've said specifically that they're going to deviate a lot from the books. Um, and it's almost kind of a wink and eye because she's kind of like coming into the fortune like, I know what I'm going to live my life as if she's a, someone who's read the books. She knows what's going to happen. And the fortune is like, oh, you don't know. You know, it's kind of like, look, you, people who read the books, yeah, you probably think you know, but you, you don't know nothing. And I thought it was kind of a wink and nod to that. But even to the greater kind of scheme is that, you know, it's this whole episode was about preparing for what's to come while making, kind of making up for, not making up for, but living the repercussions of what you've done. Mm -hmm. And that kind of set the tone for that, kind of, for the whole episode, I thought. Yeah, for sure. Let's go, Tyrion's next, right? Tyrion, yeah. I mean, what is the Yeah, matter? Tyrion just spent the last several months in a box, pooping out of that box. <laughs> I'm glad there's, I, Game of Thrones always needs to have at least one poop joke, yeah. and they, they had a great one. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was a really was, good poop joke. It was like it's a, like a two-tiered poop joke. Yeah, it really, progressed. It, it yeah, progressed. It, yeah. Well, it not really involved really Tyrion, it involved theirs. Yeah, yeah. It did, right, that they really are kicking All up around. their game. It's just, I mean, you have care, like, he has the most intelligent conversations about, like, power and seizing power in the Iron Throne, and he also scoops up poop and throws it over <laughs> the deck of a ship. And that's <laughs> did it. Well, it's funny that you say that he has most inter conversa interesting conversations about power because up until this point, Varys has been uh, Varys and some of the other characters, Littlefinger and stuff. But both of those characters now, it's it's not so much that their mystery has gone because there's still a certain like what. But we know where they lie now, right? Remember back yeah. in season one and season two and every little conversation they had in front of the Iron Throne? It's like, oh my god, what are they? They're all playing and pulling puppet strings. And now it's like, right. oh, this is what I've wanted all along. And here's my plan. And who, this is what I'm about. And so it's kind of interesting that they're basically like, yeah, okay. We're, we're moving on past that now. We're no longer trying to like kind of... Right. It's, it's, even if you don't trust them, you can trust that you mistrust them. 
Because yeah. you know what their motives are. You know where they're going. Before, it was like, every, yeah, you're right. Everything that they would say was steeped in double meanings. And yeah. and what does that, you know, what's going on here? So, But now that we know what that is, we're just kind of like, okay, now we're along for the ride. Yeah, exactly. And the other thing, too, is that we, because it's constantly introducing new characters, we could at least kind of rely on the characters we know to an extent, right? We're no longer having to constantly be emotionally like, what is he talking about? I'm trying to figure out this new person while I still don't even know who Varys is or what he right. cares about. But on that note, there was a little bit of mystery on Littlefinger. What did you guys think he meant when he's like, we'll take you where the sun doesn't shine, where Cersei can't Well, it's just where Cersei can't find you. I mean, I guess that, that could mean across the Narrow Sea, you know, into Essos. I mean, that's what mm -hmm. I thought. I was thinking it was more up north. It could maybe even be beyond the wall, which would be, I don't know why Littlefinger uh, would go yeah, there. I, don't, I just don't see what, like, I'm gonna freeze. The thing freeze. is, <laughs> no. Littlefinger seems like a guy who likes to get himself into, like, the inner circle and then just get, let chaos just destroy it. So it, he could, I think he could be going to Winterfell. I, it seems like the most ridiculous place for him to go to, the most dangerous place. I just don't, but, like, based on his line, we're gonna go where Cersei can't touch you, and when the Boltons control Winterfell and the Boltons are aligned with the Lannisters, yeah. it just doesn't seem like... Oh wait! By not touch you, I mean she will be able to do whatever she wants to. <laughs> like I don't know. I mean, no, you're right. Essos makes the most sense. And if if we'll please point out on the map. Aha! Here. Our vision. Don't hurt me with the sword. <laughs> That's what the heck are you doing? <laughs> oh, I'm just trying to shoot the. the sword. Oh, oh man, that was great when that guy was like resting in the in, on the shoulders of that lady, and then his throat just gets cut. Wasn't that, that wonderful? Like that. that was actually, this episode probably the least amount of gore and nudity of any episode of Game of Thrones. I don't know, there was a lot of butts, dude. A lot of guy butts. That's still nudity. <laughs> well, <laughs> I yeah, see my I own know. butt every day, I don't know what. I think it was at least you, three, How do you look at your butt every day? Four, and why? four butts. <laughs> you don't even know, man, it's a good butt, right? I'm pointing to that chair, yeah, there's no one in it. Yeah, you're pointing at Chewy, right? Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> Let's let's try to get somewhere back on track. No, what do you guys think about um, Varys' plan to get Tyrion paired up with Danny? Well, I think that kind of goes to like kind of basically straight to the point, right? They're basically like, this is what we're we're playing the pieces where all the pieces are set on our board, and this is what the adventure is going to be for Tyrion. Now you know what to look forward to this season. Yeah. And he's going to be drunk, and he's going to be traveling over Essos, yeah. a crazy land. It's just kind of like our letting our setting our expectations, right? Yeah, you're right. Laying the roadmap for what Tyrion's adventure is going to be this season. Yeah. I would say and that, that's yeah. a lot of sailing. Well, <laughs> this episode felt like it was setting up characters for their end game. Like a lot of them. Hmm. The only the only group of characters that seems to be left out right now is the White Walkers. Like you know, I don't know where they're yeah. factoring into this war, but Stannis has his army. He's trying to get more people to go down south, and you know, you get you, you got. Well, I, I mean, I know what you're saying, but. Like, who, what character are they going to focus on the White Walkers? Like, I don't remember this one, dead guy? <laughs> like, well, okay, yeah, you're right. It's just... Really but, they, but they talk about him, and they mentioned that, yeah, that that's why the wildlings are coming south, is because they're trying to get out of there to get yeah. out of there for winter. They know it's because winter's coming, as we all well know. Brienne and Sansa, were they were so close. They were this close. Yeah. And it was just like, God dang it. Why did you do that in the first episode? It was just like when Bran was super close with Jon Snow that one time. It's just yeah. like one of those little tricks the show does. Like, oh no! Yeah. Which, I don't know. I mean, the thing, yeah, exactly. Like, if they had not crossed or been so close, there would have been no difference. It's just, it, yeah. they're just basically, they're complete control and manipulation of our emotional, like, state, right? Yeah. And it serves no greater purpose other than basically just, like, screwing with us. Right. Which is fine, like, yeah. whatever. And, and, like, this a, a story transition, like, they're there, oh, now we're focused on... Yeah, it kind of works as a transition, a, but... Yeah. Well, I mean, the thing that sucks about the most for me is that Podrick was trying to convince Brienne, like, let's go find Sansa now. And that is, we obviously know that's the closest they're going to get to each other this whole season. Yeah, you're right, though. I mean, yeah. it, they wouldn't get together if they had shown them like that at mm -hmm. the beginning. Um, I think it's also kind of, they're, they're kind of, kind of... The idea, the theme of preparing for the future, and they have two kind of sparring matches, and we see the hilarity of Rob, is his name Robin? Robin Aaron. Yeah. Robin Aaron. Yeah. Uh, of being like the worst, stupid, awful, like, <laughs> thing. Like, he, so he makes funny. Joffrey that's... look like an amazing fighter, <laughs> yeah. and that is, that's not good. Um, but then you have the other side of John kind of sparring it with someone who, you know, like, some, like, Ro someone like Robin who has no control or has no bearing with his skill, it's basically like Littlefinger said, it's just his name. And you have the complete opposite where you have someone on the wall 
who has nothing but their ability, right? Mm-hmm. Who have who ha- can't rely on their name or money or power or anything, and it could only rely on what's in their two hands. Yeah, right. And exactly. and even Jon Snow is even kind of offered power back from Stannis. He's yeah. like, "Do you want to go take Winterfell at yeah. your home?" And you know, the Boltons killed your brother. Yeah. Yeah. And he's like, "No, I'm loyal to you know the Night's Watch." Yeah. So it's well, yeah. But also <laughs> going back to the little sparring match with Jon Snow, I mean, there's the subtext there was definitely that he was beating up on that guy, right? On the yeah. kid because he killed. Brienne, or uh, Egret. Yeah, Egret. Yeah. <laughs> Brienne. Uh, uh, what show that? Yeah. Uh, no, yeah, I mean, there is that, there's yeah. all those kind of hidden character motivations throughout. Yeah, stuff. I enjoyed that. Daenerys, I don't know, is there anything to okay. talk about? Okay, I guess it was cool to see that she sucks as a ruler of dragons. <laughs> I mean, not that I didn't well, already know okay. that. I, I, I will say that I think that she kind of, the when she kind of goes back to her dragons, and that's kind of an emotional scene, but I think that encapsulates... The whole idea too of like of of these decisions we make that we think we're doing the best thing at the time but then after some perspective we look back and we realize you know we're gonna have to live with those consequences and it sums it up Cersei sums it up perfectly when her and Jamie are in you know Tywin's death chamber and she's like you know you just you're a man of action you take your actions and damn the consequences and that that sentence kind of sums up everyone's actions right mm-hmm. I mean even Jon Snow at the end I mean he think he, you know, he's the right thing at the time. He doesn't want to see him suffer, but I mean, that's gonna have people. That's gonna change. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's people are gonna, gonna say, like, "Oh, he's loyal to the wildlings." Yeah, yeah, exactly. So there's all these little things that we think we're doing the right, and it goes back to even to Ned Stark. Always wants to be honorable and think he's doing what's right, but no matter what you do, there's gonna be consequences, and that's ultimately kind of what the show is about and what the season's gonna be about. Mm-hmm. Is going to be all these pe- these choices these people have made, these things that they've done, both good and bad, and now kind of the w- the wars to come as a result of that. Mm-hmm. The end. episode's viewer response question is of all the butts seen in this episode which was your favorite leave your answer in the comments below and tell us why that's actually a pretty good question i gotta say why really well, well i like there, there was at least I, there was four or five butts the thing I, is okay i think this is the is this the first or second three, time we've seen dario's butt at least three Three no, no, no! I think butt? there was four. No, actually, maybe there was only three. I think there's three. There was the lady in the in the brothel. The lady brothel. There are two oh, dudes. Two dude butts. There's three dude. Butts. Yeah, three dude butts. Boots. Because also because uh, <laughs> Dario's, Dario's butt. Four butts. Yeah, Who was... So it's four butts. That's what I thought. Oh yeah, we see the Unsullied. So guess three what? dude butts, and then you know the yeah. Unsullied. We never see the uh, Unsullied's butt. We no. never see his Night butt. of Flowers and his boyfriend. Yeah. Oh, I forgot. I you know you see Loris's butt once. You see <laughs> yeah, it a thousand you times. I mean, really. <laughs> <laughs>